Re-reviews, Fallout 3. Pre-review. You know, I actually didn't have any experience with the Fallout franchise before 3 came out, and while a lot of people were telling me that it was probably going to be the game of the year, the greatest thing that had ever happened to video gaming, I had no history with the series before this, which is actually the reason why when I got my hands on it, it was actually the game of the year edition that came out about a year after its release. So you can imagine that my pre-review is that I was excited about it, definitely wanted to play it, but really didn't need to go right out and grab it. Of course, that was partially because I didn't have a PlayStation 3 at the time, uh, so I wasn't actually able to play it when it originally came out, but it was the first game that I bought with the system. So I would say that on pre-review it was a 5 out of 10 for me. I definitely did want to play it, but I didn't need to like go out, grab a console, and do all of that right as soon as the game dropped. I, I wasn't that excited for it. Review. It's probably no surprise that I actually really love the Fallout franchise now, and it all starts with this game, because as I said, I didn't play the first two. So, I can tell you that it left a lasting impression on me. The interesting thing for me was that I was so used to playing fantasy or sci-fi RPGs that the idea of a post-apocalyptic setting had really not come into my purview, especially not in this way. So the whole atmosphere and the setting and the setup and everything about this game really appealed to me in a way I didn't expect it to. From the moments you actually make your first character and you start going around this vault and learning a little bit about the world that Fallout sets out to show you, to the inevitable conclusion of the game, the world of the Capital Wasteland feels very actualized, as if it's a real place that could exist. And everything that they do to try and keep that atmosphere alive is greatly appreciated from a role-playing perspective. The gameplay itself is actually pretty good throughout. The combat is a little rough, but then they try to make up for it with VATS. And since I wasn't really familiar with VATS to begin with, uh, I really liked the idea of adding a strategic element into a first-person combat scenario. And they did a really good job with it. It actually pauses the action, lets you think about the moves that you want to make. It's not necessarily a perfect system, but it was a worthwhile addition that actually gave you other ways to try and achieve objectives if you were not that big into the actual shooty part. Running around the Capital Wastelands and seeing what actually happened to DC after the end of everything is a real treat, and they do some great pieces in here about nods to the, the different buildings and where you have to recover, like, Abraham Lincoln's head at one point. The, the neat thing about it is that it does service to all of the, you know, monuments and history that you expect from this world. There are also a few other memorable locations beyond those monuments like Megaton or Rivet City, which are of course main hubs for the quest line. And you do get to explore a lot of this landscape. It is broken up a bit because of all of the metro subway tunnels, uh, which don't really lend itself to a huge open landscape and they're fairly dark and a little claustrophobic when you get into them. Uh, but when you get into the open areas of the game, it really feels kind of vast and stark and sparse in some areas. I can't really tell you that the overall storyline was particularly rich. I mean, you're basically just trying to find your dad and your dad has been working on this project purity and your choices at the end of all of this basically result in do you want to do a or b and you can decide that at the very ending uh, it's not really that you have a lot of different choices as to how to resolve everything that's going on in the capital wasteland now i'm going to do things a little bit differently in this re-review than i did in previous episodes one because as you might notice you're not seeing my face which i think everybody is more than happy about but also because a lot of the extra add-on content that I'd usually talk about in a re-review 
is something I'm going to talk about here, because it's something I experienced the first time I played. The add-ons as they released were uh, Operation Anchorage, which was pretty much a straightforward run-and-gun sort of scenario, uh, but did introduce you to, like, the uh, stealth suit and the Gauss rifle, which are great additions, uh, but in terms of the actual linearity of that mission, not particularly important. The pit, which is the part of the game where they take away all of your equipment, there always has to be one of those. This is that one. Broken Steel, which is probably the best of all of the add-ons, although I kind of have a love-hate relationship with it because although I am happy that it extended the gameplay past the end so that you can continue playing in the world after you see what happens uh, with Project Purity, and uh, it did raise the level cap and give some higher level monsters. It's also kind of a thing I don't like because it should have been that way to begin with, and then they sold the add-on to fix a problem that they created. So, eh, a little, little bit iffy on that one. Then, of course, you had Point Lookout, which was a, a very interesting little expansion where you go to a completely separate area, and it felt like it had a little bit of a campaign and side missions all of its own. And then uh, Mothership Zeta, where you fight aliens, and that's really all you need to know about that particular chapter. And if this was your entry into the Fallout franchise, it's a darn good one you're going to experience a very different kind of RPG from the typical dragons and or aliens that you were used to fighting, I mean, for the most part, in other games. And upon review, I would have called this an 8 out of 10. Re-review! So I wanted to go back to Fallout 3 now, mostly because there's been a lot of talk about it being not nearly as good as people thought it was, and I kind of understand that a little bit because when I went back through, I knew that I didn't really have any interest in going through the expansions, and I didn't really care that much about doing a lot of the side missions. The only things I really wanted to do when it came to the game was the main quest line, and of course do Moira Brown's uh, Wasteland Survival Guide, which is actually a pretty major quest line that takes you to multiple places around the wasteland that you would not normally go, and has some great bonuses for having done all of her optional objectives as well. The funny thing is, is that I actually never did the GNR building section. I actually always ran straight to Rivet City after leaving Megaton. Maybe just because, again, the subway part of this, the metro tunnels, never really appealed to me, so if I could avoid that and all of those areas, it was probably for the best. I did realize that there is a very well-founded criticism of Fallout 3, though, and it mostly comes in the fact that a lot of your role-playing choices that might have been a lot more evident in other installments is not really seen here. You don't really get a lot of clear I can do A, B, C, or D choices. That doesn't mean that you can't really explore this world and the actions that you take don't have some kind of consequences and that you can address situations in a different way, but they are definitely more subtle in the way that they are presented to you. The big problem is that about two years after this got released using the same basic game engine, they created Fallout New Vegas. And a lot of people really love Fallout New Vegas, as do I. One of the reasons was because you actually did get a multitude of different options. There were actually four different endings you could receive. And yeah, the game didn't progress past that, but did give you a wealth of content in the meantime. And there was something that felt a lot more lively about the Mojave than DC. It just felt like there was a lot more stuff going on, more factions that were in opposition to each other, a lot more intrigue in the relationships you build or destroy between all of those factions, and you did feel like everything that you do has a little bit more weight to it. You didn't really necessarily feel that way in 3. A lot of these characters that you come across are marked as critical, so you can't really even kill them. They might not die at all, or completely forget that you did something wrong or bad. 
in Fallout New Vegas, like, no one's safe, and I even tried doing a, you know, Scorched Earth run to find out that, yeah, basically besides Yes Man, you can do, just kill everything if you really wanted to, which makes it feel very deadly that, you know, an important quest carrier may actually die all of a sudden. One thing that I can't say I liked in either game, though, was the frequency of which I had to repair my guns. Now, in New Vegas, they had a few ways around this being such a problem, but it was definitely a sticking point with the limited ways you could repair your guns in 3. Uh, and, you know, it's actually one of the things I love the most about Fallout 4 is that they got rid of weapon degradation altogether. Uh, so, hey, it always had that going for it. Now, something I could appreciate about Fallout 3 that I did not appreciate the first time through and completely forgot about since playing was that there are some nods to later games. Like, for instance, when you are introduced to the railroad and since I had forgotten about that whole storyline and how it actually ties in to the main story of Fallout 4. I also forgot that there were certain characters like Madison Lee that were in this game and then were also later in Fallout 4. So this is really interesting because when I played Fallout 4 I had completely forgotten about this aspect of 3 and it felt like I was being introduced to all of these new factions only to go back to 3 and realize, oh no, this was all set up canon before 4 was even out. And you do run across some really interesting parts that have great personality, like everything that happens with the antagonizer and the mechanist and the different ways that you can address that scenario. But a lot of the side quests, even in the game, don't have that level of personality. Something that I really appreciated in New Vegas, because a lot of that, even some characters that you just meet in passing, seem to have a certain level of character that you don't necessarily get with the denizens of the Capital Wasteland. Still really good and still worth your time, but not the strongest entry in the Fallout franchise. Still, you have to give it credit for really introducing a lot of people to the Fallout series, which is, despite some um, <clears throat> notable exceptions, really excellent and adds a lot to the landscape. So on re-review, I am giving it a 7 out of 10. I will give a quick recap so that you can see the scores in front of you. I've been going back through several games that I have played in the past and just seeing if they are as good or bad as I originally remember them. It's interesting for me and that's why I started doing these re-reviews and uh, look forward to another one fairly soon because I have a backlog of these that I really know I need to get done. Uh, until then, thank you for joining me and we'll see you on the next one. Grandma Sparkles. Grandma Sparkles, I just wanted to talk. I... You're a traitor. Why are you running away? This is not good customer service. You're... Why, why are you running away? I dealt with your Meyer look problem. What is wrong with you? All right, so now you're just going for a swim, huh? Decided that good calisthenics? Are you coming back at some point? Yeah, don't hurry. I got all the time in the world. Well, look at this. We got us a wanderer all the way out here in Wilms Wharf. You must got some important business out here to be wandering around. Okay, go back in the water. I 